Well, so the, the, the user focus process was challenging for the institution. Um, uh, some of it is just perceptual misunderstanding, but some of it is pretty genuine. Um, we, we found things in the user research that were essentially unacceptable to the institution. And even when you do a pretty purely user focused process, you're still going to you still need to match it to the institutional goals. If you have no identity, you're not just giving people what they want, right? You're giving them what you want that you also want to provide. So there is a, there is a way to mesh it that's always going to be, accept, you know, hopefully good, at least acceptable and probably comfortable. Um, the, the, the trickiest part is that we made some decisions that were not recommended by the, the user research. Um, and potentially, uh, potentially just self-defeating, unfortunately. We, uh, we have a tendency, you know, if you go from the old website to the new, the old website was uh, an exercise in squeaky wheel. Really, it's, you know, we treated the homepage like real estate that, you know, had to go to the highest bidder, basically. And we weren't gonna do that again. Uh, but something that we, didn't manage to correct on time was a perception that position in the navigation is reflective of your importance in the institution, right? That, that if you're on that top level of the navigation, it's because you were the most important part of the institution. When really, the navigation doesn't serve a promotional purpose. It, it, is, it is a means of finding things that you were expecting to find. So, if you put something in the navigation because you think it's important, the chances are that nobody's going to find it anyway because they weren't looking for it, right? And we, we did make a couple decisions uh, around that, that that may not have worked. Now, there are ways in the, the website that the, way, the website is, you know, uh, uh, it can correct for that. Um, it's, it's flexible, it, you know, um, a lot of it has to do with research-related information potentially for scholars, um, and if you don't find something in the research section because you weren't looking for it there, you might find it because you went through collections and it's all linked through. So it's, it's okay. Um, uh, so there, there were a lot of difficult periods around that kind of process. On the other hand, they were also the parts of the process that exposed the real passion of the institution, right? Um, it was an opportunity for people to make the case that I am important to this institution. You know, there are similar things around store, around the, the shop, that uh, um, some of our proposals were fundamentally incorrect about the position of the store in the institution. And this is something that museums have been talking about for a thousand years. Well, okay, maybe a hundred years. But the, the, is the store part of the mission of the institution? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, and does it serve a, a, an educational purpose to, you know, reproductions do, coffee mugs probably don't, you know, but, uh, but some of the questions we had were really uh, emotional things. And it, it, the great thing about a user-focused process is you don't always have to argue. You can also just test, right? And you can, you can just say this is gonna work instead of this is what's most important or this is what it means to me. Um, so the, you know, I want to give a lot of credit to, to Cogapp, the user experience guys there are top notch and, and, and they don't only, it's not just their expertise that they know what they're doing, it's also that there were a lot of difficult situations where people were really worked up, you're dumbing down the content, this is not going to work, this is not what we mean, and they knew exactly the right thing to say to bring the, 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 the tone down a notch and help people feel more comfortable that we were going to get to a solution. Um, so that, that, that was the, it was, it was the user-focused process, which you have to do if you're going to do a website that works, um, but, is, but is always going to be difficult for the institution. And in fact, it really worked out fine, because you still have those institutional goals, as long as those are well-established, um, and you're only talking about how to get people there, it works. So we, we came up a, with a, a sort of a design philosophy, uh, it worked really well rhetorically about midway through, where we started saying, the way people find things should work for them. What they find must work for us. We aren't touching the content. We aren't touching what we're saying. What we're saying is what we're saying. It's only about getting people there. 
And that started working really well, and, and a lot of the people involved in the process came around uh, to, to understanding and supporting that philosophy. Well, I can tell you that the, the part that I took the most, you know, the, we were a team. Douglas Morgan and I really worked together on this. Um, uh, and, uh, and that meant we all worked on everything. But there are certain parts where we, we took our own piece. Um, Douglas handled itineraries. Um, uh, Morgan handled events, which is insanely complicated. Insanely complicated. And we did a great event section. Um, I, I, I took on collections. Um, which I thought was my responsibility as manager of the website, um, and it being so essential to the institution. And, and we've, we've rolled out what I think is the best museum, comprehensive museum online collection system anywhere. And I hope, I hope that, it, that it can serve as a model in, in some ways for other people. So I, I, I love that section. I got an award the other way, day. It feels kind of vindicated. Um, uh, you know, because even that was sensitive. You know, you're, you're presenting the collection with, with an interface that isn't really about the curatorial method of describing things. Um, and like I said, when you get there, what you see is what the curator said. And, and the truth is that's what the people want. Visitors want to hear what we have to say. They do look to us for authority. They do, they do believe in truth. And, and, and they want to see what we have to say about it. Um, but the they weren't going to get there if, if you know, Paris didn't mean Paris, France in this particular case, or, or if, uh, you know, the work was described with some geological term for the stone that they didn't understand. And, and so we had to, to map everything to, you know, visitor understandable uh, systems. Uh, so I, I, I mean, I feel personally very invested in that system. Um, I would say the main the main thing you know the the main thing is we rolled out hundreds of thousands of really giant pictures of the artwork, which is why people come to an art museum they want to see the artworks and this has been unreasonably difficult for museums to do. I sincerely sincerely hope that the Met having done this, giving away the art in digital digitized you know two d form uh, and understanding that it's beneficial to the institution to do that will help other institutions make that change. And we're going to start seeing a lot more museums able to, 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 to show their artworks looking beautiful online. So we'll see.